Hey there, Wastelanders! Welcome back to Kubrick for another dose of radiation with my ongoing Fallout building series, and today you're in for a treat. If you thought that our last episode was impressive, just wait until you see the progress I was able to make for this one, because we now are at the state that I could basically finish the whole series as it is, as all of the landscape is now completed, but we all know that's not happening, right? Now I know that I'm a bit late with this update, but I've been working hard on the rock face and the vault surroundings, which I really wanted finished for today, and I even made an unexpected addition to my plethora of NPCs that will be featured in this mod, so there will be a lot to go through in this episode. So go ahead and grab some stim packs, reload your Gatling lasers, and get ready to dive into the post-apocalyptic chaos of making the most detailed Fallout mock there's ever been, and let's get started right now. Now how about we turn on some lights? Okay guys, but one thing I need to start with is an update on the workflow which if you have been following this series, you'll know that it's constantly changing. Looking at how much fun both me and you guys are having with the smog series, in the previous episode I asked you if you want me to continue the series after I make all of which I originally planned, which is the vault door and the raider camp in front of it, and your response was overwhelmingly positive. Therefore, I've already started getting some new parts specifically for that, and I have more or less a plan how to approach the vault interior, so if you are not bored yet, there are a lot of fun things we'll do here in the next couple of months, making it the biggest and the best creation that ever came out of my studio. Of course, that doesn't mean that the Discuss 10,000 subscribers requirement we talk about is out of the picture, so if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that now, and then we'll talk about the current progress. Please, I'm begging you. All done? Okay, so let's talk about what I was able to make since you saw the mock last time. And first, let's quickly go through the two holes I got in the last weeks, with the first one focusing mostly on yellow pieces I needed to finish the locking mechanism, and that should be useful in making the future interior. We got some modified tiles with handles, some grill tiles, all of the technique pieces for finishing the door engine, a bunch of plates and tiles, and a few additional pieces for all of the details I'm planning to add here, so I guess there's no turning back from expanding the interior now, because for what I would use all of these yellow pieces. As for the second hull, here I focused mostly on the parts needed for making the rock work, but I've also got a few additional yellow and brown parts that I'm slowly starting to run out of, and I will need a lot of those when I'll get to making the raider camp, so I had to restock at least this little. But I don't want to bore you with only showing you these all in all standard pieces, so let's now put them in good use and finally get to building because we have a lot of work ahead. Okay. And maybe let's start with the interior of the vault because with these new yellow pieces I was able to finish up the locking mechanism, replacing the parts with the correct colors and I gotta say that it looks awesome. It's just the look I was aiming for, maybe not a perfect one-to-one -one copy of what we can see in Fallout 4, but still very similar and most importantly having all of the details to make it recognizable as what it is. And the second thing I could almost entirely finish up inside were the pipes going on the side walls for which I finally got a correct amount of pieces needed. Well. Almost, because here on the right side I'm still missing one piece, but don't worry, I'll get it sooner or later. Oh, and in the meantime, when I was messing around with preparing the top of the structure, which we'll get to in a second, I made a pretty decent vault -Tec logo for which I should find a good spot somewhere inside the vault. But for that, we need to wait a bit more, because now let's switch sides and I'll show you what I figured out with finishing the front of the bunker. As I already stated when starting this series, 
I'm taking inspiration from a reimagined version of Vault 51 which has this concrete canopy above the entrance and this is what I came up with in my vault. First, I of course made a part of a rockwork that will determine where the visible concrete starts and made a quick demo version to see if my idea is at all working and then I could make slight corrections and start it over again. All is quite similar in style using brown tiles placed with a small offset acting as a rusted metal support beams with slightly cut corners using cut out slopes and I think this is a perfect way to finish up the top. Here I want to make the rest of the canopy using bricks and place placed sideways just like in front of the beams and of course all will be surrounded by rocks from the remaining three sides. But as I was finishing up the concrete, I moved on to making the top of the rock face on the right side and I totally broke what I did previously, so I had to remake it yet again, this time reinforcing the hell out of it. I mean just look at this block of mixed pieces. I said it numerous times and I'll say it again, I hate making the rock work. But hey, at least it's sturdy now and looks quite fine as well, am I right? Well, maybe not. Okay, so having dealt with that, this way we made the entirety of the front rock face, so we can now move on to making the upper part of the concrete canopy. So first, I've prepared the tiles on which the snot concrete floor will be placed on, reinforcing the entire structure a bit, and next I've extended the brown beams to go more or less to the desired length. I'm not yet sure how much of the concrete will go here, but having that in mind, I think that we can start making the snot panels and we'll see how it goes from here. Okay, now that I made two sample pieces, we can see how is it going and yeah, no complaints here. So let's move on with the next one. The ones on the sides of course require a bit more thinking because parts will cover or be integrated to the slopes and wedges making up the rock work, but as you can see with this one, it's not that big of a deal. And as I figured that these concrete elements are just too plain for my taste, in the meantime I came up with these loose rocks that fell from the mountainside or whatever and are just laying flat on the bunker and I think it's a good way for filling up all the blank spaces here. So with that done, let's now take care of the right side of the concrete. Maybe. Okay, maybe more than that because not only I made the right edge of the rockwork here to fit the concrete, but also I played around with the back side of the rock surface, making it more or less the final shape of the mock edge. So now, I decided to switch sides yet again just to have this area ready for the next step and I made a ceiling that will go above the door using some tiles covering regular plates, placed it all loosely in the prepared slot and then I covered all the negative studs with some plates just to have some foundation for future rocks, so let's now start finishing those. As the right side is smaller, therefore a better place to start experimenting with the top rock layer, so I started with exactly that, and even though not perfect, I'm glad of how it turned out. The shapes of the individual rocks are maintained just like they are on the front, and I even added some minor details indicating that the rocks took some damage over the years, unveiling a part of the concrete that was below. So the only thing left now to do is simply expanding this rock pattern further to the left. It of course took a few days constantly building and dismantling what I did until I got a satisfying effect, but overall it's all going fine so let's keep it going, shall we? This way we have now about two thirds of the rock work done and everything was going fine until I allowed my ADHD to kick in and I started doing something completely different that I wasn't even planning to do at all. Why don't we all take a deep breath? <laughs> I've noticed an old Chima figure standing on the shelf 
and my mind went, hey, let's stop making the plant rock work and spend a couple of hours on trying to make a super mutant. And you know what? I don't regret a single thing, as this is the result. Looking at the scale, it looks more like a smaller behemoth than a regular super mutant, but I have to say that I really like how it turned out. Armor made with chains, a tire, a rubber band, and a shield acting as a shoulder strap, and even a postman bag as a knee protector, all came so well together, but the most difficult part was making the head. And what I came up with was using a piece of dark tan shoulder armor acting as the lower jaw, a resistance pilot helmet on a regular headpiece, and half of a technic bush acting as teeth, and I was simply blown away by the result. Then, he of course needed to be armed with something, so I gave him a super sledge in his arm, and we got ourselves a great looking mutant standing in the middle, that maybe later on will be attacking the raider camp or something, I don't know. But now, let's get back to the rock work, shall we? And here, I made it reach the end of the concrete where for the final part I have another idea for a little easter egg and that is making the area more or less flat and adding a scene with a skeleton that are just so common around the wasteland that I just couldn't ignore having at least one in my diorama. So let's quickly tile up this little spot over here and then we'll add the final touch to today's progress. Ah yes, I just had to include a teddy bear in my mock, as they are the most common toy you can find across the games, usually in a funny scene, so I think that this is just the perfect way to do it. Oh, and one more thing, you guys asked me to put a dead claw on my mock, right? Well, this is what I can give you as for now. I think this skull kinda resembles the shape of the one that the creature has and with some tound on horns it actually looks like a proper dead call skull. What do you think? Is that enough? Now as we are almost done with phase 1 we need one more thing to complete the look and that are the stickers I was working on for the past few weeks behind the scenes and I finally managed to have them printed. Unfortunately. I will need to make some corrections to the stickers as for example the torsos are a bit too big for the minifigures, so for the final version of the mock I will need to remake them a bit and print again. But I guess for now we can go with what I have as most of the ones I will be using here are close to perfection. So let's quickly place the ones that will fit in this particular scene and then we'll roll a short cinematic showcase of the finished first phase of the mock. I've added a couple of new details using the stickers like this magnificent vault tech billboard that placed on the 8x16 tile actually looks better than some of the original Lego prints, so I'm very happy with that. But also I made a small scene with a random vault dweller who came across some great loot while his body is fighting off a behemoth in the middle of the diorama. I've also added some skeletons from before the war using my old already yellowed molds which in my opinion are much better than the new ones we have and even a wrecked motorbike that kinda resembles the lone wanderer bike we can find in the games just change a bit to fit the regular motorbike mold. And of course, one more addition is finally the volt number. I chose 27 to be the primary volt for my mock because it is my lucky number and volt 27 is only mentioned in the Fallout Bible as one that is overpopulated just like the head of Big Mountain executive was talking about on a meeting we saw in the TV show. We could intentionally overcrowd a vault so people have to compete to survive inside it. But now I'm gonna stop talking for a bit and I'll let you enjoy this short cinematic of the first phase of the build so enjoy. <laughs>
Now at this point, it could truly be the end of my mock as all is looking as a properly finished scene even without showing the part of the interior I already have done. With so much happening in the front like a battle with the super mutant in the middle, lots of details and easter eggs from before the war, and of course a greatly detailed terrain and the vault entrance, which is for sure the main focus of the scene. But of course, we all know that's not the end of my series, right? First of all, I need to make the raider camp that I've been talking about since episode 1, which I will make first, and then we'll move on to phase 2 that is making the interior of the vault. But for that, as we agreed in the previous episode, I need you guys to get me to 10,000 subscribers on this channel, so if you are enjoying this series as much as I am, then go ahead and subscribe share this video with your friends and of course drop a like if you enjoyed what you just saw here today to show the youtube algorithm that this is something you want to continue watching but now with all that said we have reached the end of this marvelous update so i will see you all in the next video here on Break. and until then as always just make sure you keep it bricking